टॉप गन सीजन थ्री हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री आई एम योर होस्ट शेन फिलिप्स इन दिस एपिसोड वी लुक एट द स्टोरी ऑफ डॉक्टर अनंत a physician who turned businessman the Sikh community bore the brunt of the ugly communal riots of 1984 after which most of them felt let down and dejected on rainbow top guns today we have one such Sikh a man who decided to leave his hometown delhi and settle in the united states of america but destiny had something else in store for him presented by Nokia inspired by Cadillac His home is like the palatial mansion of a Hollywood film star. It's probably the first one in Dubai which also has a bowling alley. But there's one difference. This home has been designed personally by the Anans. It has a beautiful prayer room too, which shows that this family is quite firmly grounded and spiritual. I also had an interesting conversation with his wife, Jasmine Anan. Hello and welcome to Rainbow Top Gun Season 3. Today, we're in conversation with Dr. Navjeet Singh Anan, the chairman of Goldline Group and one of the most prominent figures in the Indian community in the UAE. Dr. Nand, welcome to Top Guns. Thanks, Shin. Thanks a lot to have us. It's a pleasure to to be here. Your house is a true mansion. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So tell us a little bit about your roots. Tell us about your family. Where are they from? Shin, my family came from what is Rawalpindi in Pakistan today. My father came in the migration of 1947 to India with a bare shirt on his back. came to india with education that the only thing which he had he was a graduate from lahore university and started working as a clerk he had a whole family to support we had nothing to the extent that my father tells me the time we used to have two meals a day we were going to hold three meals and one of the meals used to be from the gurdwara of the temple we started small and because of his education he made it big as matter of fact when retired he was chief economic advisor to government of india so your father started from the bottom worked his way all the way to the top from the shop floor the corner office he kind of did that and the only thing which helped him all along was education having education and being the best at it and those are the same values which he instilled in all his brothers sisters and the children all my aunts uncles and my brothers they all qualified doctors or engineers the emphasis to education is the maximum in our family so education is the greatest gift that you can give someone we firmly believe in that with the example which i would like to give is you could give a fish to a man who would eat dinner for a day or you could teach him how to fish and he lead all his life we firmly believe that education is like teaching the man how to fish and that is what a family has been all about all about education and uh, and you're no stranger to tough times i believe you were in india during the 1984 sikh riots where you were almost killed yes in 1984 I was a practicing physician in All India Medical Institute. It was a very unfortunate time when Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was shot by bodyguards. She was brought in, and I saw the Hindu Sikh riots start. I used to wear a turban in those days. I was stoned at, and there's a mob trying to run after me, trying to kill me. In the hospital where you were. In the hospital where they working. came in. They came in, rocks, throwing rocks, and so miraculously you literally ran for your life. I ran for my life. I ran out of the hospital went to a friend's house where I was kept inside the bathroom for 4 days but there's only safe place which I had later on my friends from the army hospital came and rescued me and got me out of the house and keeping in mind that this is my country where I had grown up where I was trying to do everything right I see this happened to me just because I happened to be Sikh just because we were minority this happened that left a lot of mental trauma 
on my mind and that is when I decided first time to leave the country. And that is when I left India and went to America. That must have been a terrifying moment of your life and it's very logical. Anyone with half a brain would want to leave the country and so you decide to immigrate to the United States of America. Yes, after the roids, with all the mental trauma which I had, I decided I was going to leave India and I went to America with nothing else but my education. The only th reason I went to America was that's where I found is going to be freedom for all and a respect for the education. And that's what I found in America. So you could get a job in a city like New York in the US because of your fantastic education. The education of India helped me in a long way. Despite I didn't have too much money, but because I had an Indian degree, I had to give an exam, which I gave exam and I was waiting for my results. While I was waiting for my results, I was working as a technician on the doctors in America. The results came, I got into the residency, did the residency, had my clinic, and I was working there. So you had your own clinic yes, I had within a very clinic. short period of time? Within a very short period of time. And so then what happens after that? While I had a good clinic in America, I came to India and I was discussing with my uncle about the money which I was making in, in America and the amount of taxes I was paying in America. And he suggested to me, why don't you try Dubai? It's a tax-free country. Taxes was a very big thing for me at that point of time and I said, why not? We're in conversation with Dr. Anand, the chairman of Goldline Group. And coming up, we're going to find out how he made it in Dubai. So stay with us. In 2012, my father was very sick. I spent six months in India trying to take care of him, but I lost my father. That's when I realized that you could do everything and you could do everything right, but you're only human, you're gonna go. And with my father's wishes to set up something in education, I said, let me do something in education. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. Thakan ka ek hi upai hai. एक कप कड़क चाय उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर चाय की पत्ती चीनी कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूँ ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते हैं जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए गैस बंद कर दीजिए रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच Rainbow Top Gun Season 3 Hello and welcome back. We are in conversation with Dr. Anand and we're about to find out how we made it in the UAE. Dr. Anand, what was it like when you first came to the UAE? UAE was not what we see UAE today. When I came in, I came into the Emirates of Ajman. I started the business with a local there. Unfortunately, all the money which I gave to him was stuck in a big way. I stayed here for about one, one and a half years, but couldn't get my money out. And while I was waiting, a friend of mine from India came in and he asked me for my help to source some metal scrap from UAE to India. As a physician, I didn't know what metal scrap was all about or anything about metal scrap. But I learned what metal scrap was to help this friend of mine. The funny thing I would like to tell you in that is, first time when I went to the bank to give my documents for the metal scrap, the banker told me on my face, Dr. Anand, you are never going to make it. You are a doctor, go back to America and do your medicine. And that I felt was very bad. When I came back, I started working with the metal scrap but I was always having my doubt whether I will be able to make it or not. But the determination that I will never go back to America as a loser is what kept me going. From 96 to 1999, we had a very good time. We made a lot of money. Unfortunately, I was stuck again in 1999. My local did a fraud with the banks, and when he did a fraud with the banks, all his bank accounts were frozen. Unfortunately, he owned 51% of my company, so my company account was frozen. And everybody felt and there's a rumor in the market that Dr. Anand will run away because he has no money anymore. But I was determined to prove everybody that no, 
if I decide and I will do something, I will not run away. With whatever was left with me, my fixed deposits, my real estate, I sold them off and started all over again. With a new company in a free zone. God has been kind to me after then and we did well for ourselves. One company led to the other. From the steel scrap which we were doing, the backward integration we did was we set up a demolition company. Steel scrap company had a lot of heavy machinery. In demolition, we had a lot of heavy machinery. And we realized the biggest consumer for heavy machinery was the construction industry. So we went into construction industry. While we were doing construction, we decided which is the best paying line in construction, that is piling. We decided to go into piling and MEP. While we were doing metal scrap in UAE, we realized that it's only fair that we should do it from the neighboring countries. So we set up offices in Kuwait, Oman, Yemen, South Africa. Today we have offices in 17 countries we collect metal scrap from. While we were doing metal scrap, we were also doing lead batteries. Lead batteries, when the London Metal Exchange for the lead started going up, people were not paying me the price for the battery. So I at that time realized that we have to do something better. So we put up a lead smelting in Ghana, in West Africa. While we were doing metal scrap, we also started doing plastic. So we make plastic granules out of plastic waste in Kuwait, in Abu Dhabi, and in Dubai. All of this was doing very good. Construction was doing good, scrap was doing good, till 2008. In 2008, the crash hurt me like it hurt everybody. Construction had a very big hit in Dubai, so all the projects I was doing stopped. All the payments used to come from various development projects stopped coming. Metal scrap, which used to be $800, became $200. I had 69,000 tons of metal scrap which was on the way, and which lost way. The value was lost and all the buyers backed out. As the third time, we got hit very badly. We have a saying, the reach of God will not take you where the will of God cannot protect you. And God protected us in a way. We came back after 2008. We had tough times in 2008, 2009, but we were out of the problem. And what was the biggest learning coming out of the crisis for you? The biggest learning which was there was have faith in yourself and keep on working hard. Every time we fell down, we came up in a bigger way. And how, how many companies and how much staff do you have now? Right now, we have got about 13 companies and we've got about 4,500 people working for us. It is my pride to be the first uh, employer of this organization. It was 1995 I joined him and it was a small uh, office where I and Doc was there. It is a vision which he had that carried all the way to establish such a big organization now. And later, as since the years goes, one by one we added up and we grow. And now you can see the, the size of the group. That is only hard work and the dynamic and the vision what he had. In 2012, my father was very sick. I spent six months in India trying to take care of him, but I lost my father. I'm sorry. And that's when I realized that you could do everything and you could do everything right, but you're only human. You're going to go. And with my father's wishes to set up something in education, I said, let me do something in education. I thought only it was fair to give back to society what society has given to me all these years. With that in my mind, I set up the school which I had gone to myself, Springdale School from India, where I had studied, I set up the same school in Dubai. We opened the school in 2013. We have the same standards as a good American or British school, but Indian fees. It might be hurting the bottom line, but the idea was very clear, to give the best quality education to Indian kids and to other kids who want to learn. How do you manage your time across 13 businesses? They seem so diverse. Now you're launching a new concept, the education vertical that you're heading into. How do you manage that by yourself? Most of the 13 businesses I do by myself, but education is mainly run by my wife. And I think she's a better person to run the school than me. So most of the decisions made in the school are made by my wife. So your wife is now uh, joining the family empire. She's joining the education. I met Navjeet in Delhi. It happened to be like uh, he was very close friend of our neighbor, and he used to visit his house almost every day. So maybe he used to see me, and then he went off to U U.S. And after four or five years, he came back, 
and their family sent us a proposal. And we were also looking for a match in those days. And this offer came up and my family, like, you know, we got interested because he was doing well in US. So you moved to Ajman as well, then the Gulf War starts because it's 1991. 1991. And then he says, guess what, I'm not a doctor anymore, I'm a scrap man. How did that go It over? was never like that. He, one day he announced that. It was every, every day, like, I was with him all throughout his difficulties going on. And I was, because he used to go and meet that local to give back the money so that we could go back. And he, we used to have sleepless nights. He used to call him, like, you know, very odd hours. Come and meet me one o'clock in the night. Then I used to wait for him in the night, OK, he's coming back. And he used to sit outside that guy's office, like, till 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the, like, late nights. And it was a hardship on me as well that he, I used to wait for him. Initially, it was a little hard. Very challenging. It was. And then when did things start to turn? And We were not very sure of, like, for how long we were going to stay in Ajman or Dubai because we had plans to go back to US. Uh, the business which he had started all this while, it started picking up. And then we decided it's not a bad place to live in. Then business started to come in. Yeah. And that's when he got into the yeah. scrap business. Then we, we started comparing. Dubai with the lifestyle in US, we felt we are much better off here. And then what was the next milestone, 95, and then when was the next kind of milestone? Next milestone next... was when he started his construction business. That was the time when I also decided to join him in the construction thing. Okay. But then uh, we had a younger one. So then again, I came back home. So I wanted to work all this while then, you know, I got busy with my children, so. Right. Didn't pursue this thing further. So when did you decide to get back in the business, get involved with the education sector? I was actually, I had no idea that I'm going to go, go back to the business. It was just like two years back when my husband decided to start another venture of education. He says, will you join me in that? I said, I would love to. So tell us about Springdale, your school. Springdale School is my, uh, my husband's passion. He always wanted to do something good for the society. It is just like when I saw the school, I said, I want to be part of the school. And now when I have taken over the school, it is my dream. It is, it is something which I can do. I want to put up my best in the school. So what's the future of the education business look like? Shane, uh, education is not a business for us, first of all. Uh, we, try, we are trying to expand a lot in this field. We have taken up a franchise for British School, Ellesmere College, which is going to come up soon in 2015, September. And then we are also planning to set up uh, nurseries all over Dubai. And also we are, we are trying to expand Springdale's to Abu Dhabi as well as in Sharjah. And we might go to Oman and Qatar. So what does the future for Gold Line Group look like? The future looks very, very good. All the divisions which we set up, are becoming bigger and bigger. Demolition unit was awarded the best demolition in the company, in the country by the women's penalty this year. Shipping company has become very big. Construction company has got over a billion dollars of order book already. In education, we already set up Springdale School, which is doing very, very well. We're thinking of setting up a medical college in the country. For my construction company, we have decided to do forward integration to go into developing ourselves. And we will be developing a lot of buildings along with different people. The rest of the Anand story after the break, so stay with us. The fundamental fact remains that he believes that quality education, there should be no compromise, whatever it costs. The profit is the byproduct, and he wants to spend more of his energy, time and investment in establishing good quality schools in the GCC and in India. I believe tactics is something which keeps the business going. In addition to good tactics, we need to have a more value addition in every business. Any business which does not do, do more integration is bound to lose. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. This is not a phone to just capture beautiful things. This phone captures feelings. It memorizes dream machines and the goosebumps you got when they screamed. To record a jump into the unknown and relive the madness, the dry mouths, the exploding chests. Introducing the large screen new Nokia Lumia 1520 with a full HD display, full HD video recording and distortion free sound capture. Don't just record, relive. When you shoot for the moon, you build your courage. 
Test your passion. And persevere. The all new 2014 Cadillac CTS. A bold journey. Gapshap ke saath to ek kap chai banti hai. Masala chai. Ilaichi, long, or dalchi. Isko kutle. Ubalte pani me dale. Iske andar chai ki patti or chini dali hai. बढ़िया मसाला चाय बनाने का मेरा एक छोटा सा राज है ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते ये हुई ना मसालेदार बात रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री Welcome back to Rainbow Top Guns. Dr. Nand, would you choose good strategy over tactics or good tactics over strategy? I would read tactics over strategy at any point of time. I believe tactics is something which keeps a business going. And tactics is what is a difference between a good business and a bad business. You should be thinking always ahead of the competition. And the tactics have to keep on changing at every point of time, every day. Any business which keeps on holding on to the same strategy is bound to lose. In addition to good tactics, we need to have a more value addition in every business. Any business which does not do, do more integration is bound to lose. A lot of people give more credit to talent. I believe business is done the other way around, the old way. I give more preference to loyalty. For me, loyalty is definitely over talent. He has contributed a lot in developing me as a person and a professional. Uh, right from the day one, his uh, level of guidance, he understands the things very fast and uh, he assists in all developing the group. Uh, so it had been really great contribution for me. Luck is very important in man's life, but hard work is more important. I believe the harder I work, the luckier I get. There is only one way to success and that is hard work. So when you talk about hard work, how does work-life balance factor into that? Because from 91 to 95, that was a tough period. You must have been working seven days a week. I still work seven days a week. There is no shortcut to hard work. The only regret which I have nowadays is when I work so hard, I do not get enough time to work and be with my family. Sometimes I feel that I have been unjust to them. And it has not been right. I should have spent more time with the family. More time. I think when you, when, you, when you look at it, it's not what you want, but what you're willing to sacrifice if you want to be successful. And, I and sacrifice what I should not have sacrificed. I feel even if I spend more time with the family, it would have better. But I cannot undo what I've done. Now I try to do my best, but I am what I am today. There's still lots of time left, though. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. My elder daughter is already going to university. My younger one is in school. I try to make sure that I come to all the events she has. Try to spend the weekends with her. But that's the only regret which I have about my business and my success. It costs me too much of time. Something I've learned from my dad is when I set my mind to something, I should do it and do it to the best of my ability. Growing up, my dad was the one that got me into playing piano. So he would tell me, oh, you got this new piece? Okay, learn it, and then play it with all of your heart. So I did. And I remember he had this one piece that he liked a lot, Memory from the Broadway musical Cats. I learned it, and then I played it with all my heart just to see him happy. I love how he pampers me all the time, and he never says no to me. And whenever I need help in homework or I need help in anything, he'll always be there for me. When you look back at it, we look at 1991, when you were in Ajman, things weren't really, you, you know, you weren't hitting stride yet. You were contemplating going back to the US and going back to be a physician. What would have happened? How would your life have been different if you would have made that decision to go back to the United States and be a doctor? 
five years the captain contemplating should I go back, should I not go back. If I had gone back, I would have been a good doctor. Although in my mind I would have always thought of myself as a loser. I would have served humanity in my own way as a physician. Today, all these years, when I've not gone back, I believe it has served me in a better way. Today I have the money, I'm thinking of setting up a medical college where I'll have a lot of physicians coming out, a lot more people helping the humanity, more than I could have served myself by, by being alone. Dr. Nan, thank you so much for sharing your life and your home with us on this episode. It's been an amazing journey, and I think, you know, for me, the main takeaway from your story was that never give up attitude. You know, no matter how tough it was, no matter how dark it got, you never gave up. And I think so many of us stop just before the dawn. And I think your story reminds us that we should just keep swinging because that next punch just might be a knockout. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thanks a lot. Well, that's it for this episode of Rainbow Top Gun Season 3. I think we just heard the story of Dr. Anand, and if you take one thing away from this episode, I think it's that success or opportunity is not in the market. It's inside you. And I don't think it mattered if Dr. Anand was in New York as a physician or in a dusty town of Ajaman selling used scrap metal. He found success. That desire and that drive was inside, and that's what was the blossoming of his business, of Gold Line Group. And I think that's the biggest takeaway we can take from this episode. And this is your host, Shane Phillips, saying, Masalama. So what role does luck play in a success story? I believe luck is important, but more than luck in my life is the faith in God. I believe the reach of God will never take you where the will of God can't protect you. God is there to protect me and he's always helping. In all the difficult times, he was there with me.